So the first question we have is from Nicholas Pescott from Czech News. What do you think of the government's decision to discourage post-secondary institutions from notifying the public, faculty, students about any potential exposures on campus? I mean, <laughs> what would be the possible rationale for that? When I look at reporting from Atlantic provinces that are doing really well, one of the things that they do is they let people know it's in the newspapers, it's on TV. Where did the exposures occur? Because what you want is, you know, Zeynep Tufeki, who's this wonderful journalist uh, uh, in New York now, made this point early on. When we have a disease that grows via super spreader events, what that means is that most people who are infected got infected in a super spreader event. So you're actually much less interested in who they contact moving forward because some cases are going to be dead ends than you are, you know, where did they get it? Where did the, where did the case come from? Uh, because if you, if you know where that case came from, you're going to find a whole bunch of other cases that got it in the same place. So, you know, <laughs> I mean, this just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to wrap my mind around this in terms of what the possible rationale for that would be, but that just, what do I think of it? I think that's bad public health practice. I think that, and th this is a bigger theme, I think, with BC, is when it's public health, right? The team is the community, right? Correct. And you may have public health authorities who are sort of supposed to be captaining this team, but a lot of this stuff has to get done by the people on the team, which is the public. And the people on the team can't do stuff if you won't inform them. People have no ability to use available tools to protect themselves if they're kept ignorant of risk. So, so you know, I'm sorry, I, I don't have a, a more nuanced answer because I, I just, I, and I'm sure someone from BC CDC can say, well, we're going to do it because of X, Y, Z. That just sounds like brushing your problems under the rug, which doesn't work historically, especially well for communicable disease, it tends to come back and bite you. Well, I appreciate your candor. Uh, we had Dr. Lisa Barrage on one of our other briefings and she actually said, you know, rapid tests and letting the public know where the infections were was about public empowerment and right. getting them to be part of the team to do what is needed. As is, as is messaging on aerosol, because right. when, everybody, everybody can understand aerosol. It's Canada. We can see our breath five months a year, <laughs> right? We know right. what aerosol is. And if you tell us that's how this spreads, People can fill in the gaps in terms of how they should behave in different settings, but it's disempowering to keep the truth from the public. And I'd also add, not to be too much of a firebrand here, but you pay for that data, right? This whole public health system is, is funded by your taxes. I mean, for heaven's sake, surely you have a right to know what's going on in, in, in your community. It just strikes me as extremely paternalistic, some of this stuff. Wouldn't be acceptable in, in clinical medicine, and I don't think it should be acceptable in public health. 